Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony. Let's talk a little bit about the right to repair. Right to repair. Everyone kind of wants the right to repair their products, right? Or repair stuff. And I think electronics is no different. I think being able to take it wherever you want um, and it doesn't have to be authorized or just being able to do it yourself, I think that's a good thing. And that's basically what the right to repair is at this point. And there's some countries out there that kind of allow it. Here in the United States, you kind of have it. There's some things that need to be ironed out with it, I believe. But um, you can take it to a third party and get your devices repaired, which is a great thing. But then there's some other other countries that are kind of introducing it now and kind of just being like, oh, yeah, we probably need to do this, too. And I think that's a good thing and a good direction to move into because right to repair can really help out a community. And I and by that, I mean being able to eliminate some e-waste. Electronic waste is just as huge. But instead of just throwing out devices or whatever else or always having the, you know, authorized repair center to repair it you can take it to a third party or repair it yourself maybe save a little money maybe revitalize that product maybe be able to get it you know in back into your hands working again or you know you wanted to move on to another device get it back into somebody else's hands you just want to give it to you you're feeling like you know you want to go repair the device and give it to somebody that you know or somebody you don't know just so that they can have the opportunity to use it as well i think there's an opportunity out there for third parties authorized dealers and consumers more importantly that they're able to do this and i think one thing that nobody really looks at is looking after the consumer companies they want the bottom line right they got shareholders to go to if they're publicly traded even if they're privately held they want to you know make sure that they're adding to the bottom line and so they don't always think of their consumers first and foremost and if they're worried about third party repair you know there's reviews for that i mean We've had it for hundreds of years of being able to take our, you know, delighted cars to third party auto shops, right? Being able to do this other stuff. I'm not comparing it to, you know, electronics repair to auto shops. I'm, what I'm doing is saying that there's, we take our stuff to third parties all the time. It doesn't really matter where we take it to. It doesn't always have to be authorized. Um, because sometimes authorized people, do they do a better job of it? If they always did a better job, I can see a little bit more about the authorized side but they don't i mean i watch a lot of repair videos online I'm, I, I think i find them fascinating right it's something i want to get more into but you have like lewis rossman go check him out if you want to see some repair stuff or ipad rehab another good one for repair and they're going through and repairing these devices and sometimes the authorized stuff just isn't as good and by the way i've dealt with authorized repairs i've had to help facilitate with for uh customers of mine and stuff like that it just doesn't go as well as you always hope i mean sometimes it's quick and easy other times it's a lot of wasted money and should we really be wasting money on stuff that should be able to be repaired or whatever when is, there's a better way and sometimes i feel like there's a better way and a different different uh, segment to go through so i hope that this eliminating a lot of e-waste and being able to go that route and seeing all these other things outweighs a lot of what these companies are saying and I also think that companies should start looking at their customers because being able to take care of your customer is going to be key to develop that business, that repeat business that people want to come back to. I know people want to go after brands or go after or support brands a lot, right? And if a brand does a great thing, they should be supported. If a brand does a bad thing, they should be uh, reprimanded. And right to repair is something that should be out there more that companies should see as a benefit. Yeah, it's going to hurt their bottom line, but they're not going to sell that new phone. But, you know, when you come look at it, that consumer is going to come back and say, you know what? I was able to get this phone repaired, this repair shop, third party or authorized. Guess what? They were able to repair it. I still have my phone. Okay. Now the phone's completely dead. Who knows what happened to it? Right. Or, or device, right? Okay, I'm going to go back to this company. I like what they did. They were able to support me through that time of, you know, where it was broken. And I did something, whatever happened to it. And now here it is again. I think that can be something good. I think that's going to be a good future for devices if we can repair them. It eliminates it anyways. And it also helps facilitate that cost with the, or trust with the customer 
so that they can realize, oh, yeah, if I go back here, guess what? They're going to allow me to repair it. And Motorola and iFixit, I think, are starting that on a good foot. I like what they're doing there with Motorola, being able to replace the batteries, being able to replace the screens and selling those through iFixit. I really hope that more of this is to come. People are worried about logistics and how this is all going to operate. And they, they go about this. Don't think, like, don't dive in and say, oh, yeah, we got to have everything solved before we can do it. You put the problem out there, it's going to get solved right that's that's the way we're able to do this as humans like come up to this point in life we've been problem solving forever so we have an opportunity to problem solve again right big deal well, we can do it um but we can go through and you know there's suppliers there's third party suppliers there's first party suppliers as you get the product you're able to supply it let's say yeah people always say but on new products you're not going to have it on there yeah we understand that it's a new product we also hope it doesn't break right away as a new product. So there's probably going to be some time. There's going to be some lead time. That always happens. I've had broken motherboards. I've had to send back. I've had to wait six weeks plus. Okay, I had to wait. That's just the way it was. I knew I wasn't going to get any faster. Complaining wasn't going to help, so I just waited. You know, I usually you know just check up. Hey, is this coming yet? No, not yet. They're usually pretty nice about it. Customer support there. I decided to go back to them the next time because they were nice about it. Um, and they were good about keeping what I asked to keep me in the loop. So there's there's opportunities here to create and forge that customer relationship that can really benefit. And I think the right to repair needs to also leverage that uh, talking point as well because it, it's really huge. I think that there's, you know, being able to keep your devices, move them on, e-waste. There's, there's just so many good out of here that companies should be able to supporting it and being able to champion it out there, especially when people are creating businesses and everything else out of it and really want to help other users to be able to continue to use their products. And I really hope that as this kind of keeps on going forward and the right to repair, you know, the companies understand of how important it is and to really support and get behind it because it's one thing I really hope does take off. Um, as you see, I'm pretty passionate about it and I, I really want it to be able to go forward. And I, I'm probably going to be starting to repair some more products here going forward, but I'm kind of excited about it as well to see um, what companies support it going forward and which ones really don't like it and really, really lobby against it. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support Grain Loaned and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate it. And I thank you guys for that. And uh, I'm, I'm working on that computer build video. I kind of went in a different direction with it. I had some problems with the audio. So I've kind of I'm going to do some voiceover on it. Hopefully you guys will appreciate that once it gets out. But then I also got bought a couple one terabyte SSD drives to kind of replace all the other drives on my main desktop. And so we got the 970 Evo Plus and we got the Western Digital Black SN750. So let me know what you guys want tested on there. I do plan to throw them in the desktop at the same time with the old drives in so that these can just be tested. There will be nothing else. It'll just be testing these drives for that little time being until I can put the OS on them and yeah, move over to these drives permanently. So with that, thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support the real learn. And until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe.